welcome to the Soul Tribe Podcast. The Soul Tribe Podcast was created to help you navigate through the world of spirituality, wellness, and self-development in an easy, grounded, and relatable way. We break down everything from the Akashic Records, manifesting, spirituality, and so much more. We want to help expand your boundaries and bring the spiritual world to you in a fun and easy way. Get ready to be inspired with tips, tools, and easy-to-digest information. Let's do this. Hey everyone, uh, this is Lucia here. We're doing something a little bit different today, Um, so Lorena's not joining me because um, I wanted to spend some time talking about a book that I had started reading that I'm really obsessed with, Um, and I thought it was a really good idea to give my thoughts, and I wanted to compare a lot of the things that I read with the things that coincide or I've seen in in sessions as an Akashic Records reader. So... It, the book that I'm going to overview today is called The Journey of Souls, and it's by Michael Newton. Um, so basically, Michael Newton, and this book actually reminded me of uh, the Brian Weiss book. I, I'm pretty sure everyone knows the book, Many Lives, Many Masters. And I always say that almost everyone that is into spirituality or into being awake or awakened at some point in in that path read many lives many masters by brian weiss he also has other books that are really great but that seems to be like the main one he wrote that everyone has read um or has you know has some sort of impact from it i'm one of those people i started i started reading that book and it wasn't that I wasn't I wasn't a believer because I was a believer. I did believe in spirituality, and I did believe in that there were something more than just flesh. But for me, it was like a wake up call of how extreme the other side can be. I didn't know what to expect or what to think about being a soul and not just being a body. And that book for me was like, oh my goodness, wow. It's just totally like, you know, wake up call, totally opened my mind to accepting other things. And this was, um, you know, this was when I believed in past lives, but I didn't know, did we have one? Did we have two? Like, I didn't know any, I didn't have any details in my mind about what I thought past lives were. And so it was really great. And this book, it's almost like this book is like the next level for me, at least, because he has a very similar story in the sense that this is a person that was treating individuals and helping them through hypnosis. Um, He, just like Brian Weiss, was not a a believer in, um, you know, in past lives and didn't really believe in all that stuff. Um, and he found that with a patient that had a chronic issue, um, in under a hypnosis session, this, this individual ended up going back to a past life where that pain had originated and it was actually a mistake. He didn't mean to take him there. It, it was almost like you, yeah, I wasn't obviously in the hypnosis session, but the way he describes it is, you know, take, takes the person back to the origins of the pain and somehow they end up there, right? In a past life. Um, and so he talks about in the beginning of the book, how he was not a believer, even though in the book, it seems like he is a believer because of the way it's written and, and and all the information it's given. But yeah, that's, that was, I guess that was his wake up call in a way. Right. And so that's how the book opens and the amount of information and the amount of really cool details you read. Like if you haven't read it, I recommend you read it because I'm not going to go through the details of the book. I just want to compare notes with things that were shown and discussed with things that I myself as a reader go, Oh my goodness. Like, yeah, I've seen that. I've heard about that. Or I, I, I remember saying that to somebody in a reading, or I remember saying that to myself in a reading, or I remember somebody that read me said that to me. So, um, that's kind of where I want to go with this. And so it talks about death and departure, uh, and it starts off as 
talking about amnesia, right? So we, we're all here. The reason why we don't know that we're souls, the reason why we're not, we're not aware of the fact that we're more than what we look like is, is because we have that amnesia. The Akashic Records always described that to me as, um, part of the ego that's here is here to give us like the character traits and the personality. It's here to help us forget also. So that's the part of where the amnesia is coming from. It's, it's, the ego is helping us think that we're less than we really are. And the ego is helping us forget because we're supposed to not know. Because if we knew everything and if we remembered everything, our human experience, the soul is having a human experience, our human experience would be totally pointless because we would already really know the truth behind everything. Why am I here? What am I here to learn? What are going to be my struggles? I'm already going to know, oh, this is one of the struggles. Great. Which is another reason reason why as an Akashic Records reader, you can come get readings and get information and very useful, but they're not going to give you every single detail and exactly the way it is because you're not going to progress. You're not going to learn. The masters, the guides, the beings of light, and the Kashik records in general want to give you information to help you with your path, but they don't want to awaken you from that amnesia because that's not useful to you. They don't want to break this opportunity of learning that you have, that you've set up for yourself. Your soul set up this whole, this whole opportunity to learn. And that amnesia is what's going to allow you to do that. So that's one of the first things I go, okay, yeah, amnesia, I know exactly what they're talking about in the book. Um, but what's really cool is they talk about the other side in a different way than the way I've seen it as a reader because I don't really see that. What I see when I do a reading is I see the library that is the Akashic Records. When I when I when I'm given images of of the in the moment of reading, I'll see past life images. I'll see images of personalities of you know, people that person might be asking about or themselves, I'll see energy and, and, and feel what the energy is like. And I'll, and I'll be able to, yeah, to see the Kashuk Records library and the masters that are present in the reading, the guides that are present in the reading. Sometimes there's beings of light. And, and sometimes I'll be able to see the book in itself, not always, but sometimes. So that's it. That's, it. that's all I really get to see. I don't get to see past that, past how do, how do souls live once they're no longer incarnated and when they're not in the Akashic records, right? Or they're not with their book. What is going on? What are they doing? It's, it, it was always very intriguing to me. And that's why this book for me has been like phenomenal. <laughs> it's like, I get to see a part that I don't get to see as a reader. I might be getting tidbits of information and stuff, but it's not the same as like getting a whole picture of the experience of a soul going through it in the moment. Cause that's what you're getting with a book. They're the, the case studies he has in the books that the individual is under hypnosis giving examples of uh what they're seeing they're well, not giving examples they're saying what they're seeing they're saying oh i see this i see that and he's he's asking questions as a therapist he's asking them questions to get a bigger picture of what they're going through what the soul is seeing what the soul is living through and so there's a whole homecoming and going through the gateway and the gateway for me and i remember the Kashuk records always talk about um the steps after the body, you know, the body disincarnates or sorry, the soul disincarnates from the body. We do a a reunion, they call it. So the re reunite and they, they've never really specified who's always there to reunite with you, but the book does. Um, but the cash record says you reunite, there's a reunion and they, they always tell me the three R's. That's what the cash records always told me review. So you uh, re reunite review and rest. Those are the three ones they always give me. So the reunion is your soul leaves the body it starts progressing into the, the, the trail that will take it to the other side, whatever you want to call it, the other dimension, the other side. Some people want to call it heaven, whatever it is that you want to call it or how you want to categorize it. You are usually met up by an, another individual soul and that many times was represented as family members that are not incarnated that, you know, that, that soul really loved or was very connected to even friends. I've heard about, um, animals people talk about, you know, that have experiences and see things. They say animals will will also be there. Animals you really loved. Right. Um, but the Akashic records always just gave a general description of reunion. You reunite with other beings, beings that you were very, very connected to, 
And then the other one is review. And this is, this is the one I've heard the most about because it has a lot to do with the Akashic Records, the review. You review everything that happened in, that, in the life that you were just incarnated in. So you review good moments and bad moments. Times that you made people feel really good, times you made people feel really bad. And they always describe it as almost like you're reopening the book, the book of life, your Akashic Records, your book of life. It's almost like you're reopening the book and you're able to see everything. And they always they always show it almost as like a projection or movie kind of thing, but it's actually the book. It's almost like you can open the book and the book shows it somehow. So it it really the information is coming from the book in itself. So that's why there's so much information from the Akashic Records about the second step that they call from the three R's, the review, which is really important for everyone to understand, I think, because they talk about this in the book and, and the review is, is similar or you see it almost like in almost like for real time, you they feel it, they, they it's it's the clarity of it and the way they see everything that went tra- transpired in that life. It feels very in the moment and very real. They get to see in big details. Um, it's not just like kind of like a, a, just a movie where like you don't feel like it's you. They seem to feel like exactly the way that, that they felt in that moment and, and they feel the thought process and everything, right? And so the, the, it's really important to understand that intentions in the book are important because if you, if you mistakenly hurt someone and your intention wasn't to hurt that person, then you have an opportunity to maybe not accumulate negative karma or dharma from that because your intention wasn't really there. And it really depends. Like you can't, I can't really say because it depends on what happened, what the situation was and what your intentions really were. Right? So this is kind of just like an over overview of, of a possible, you know, situation. But if your intentions weren't wrong, if you weren't trying to be hurtful, or if you didn't do anything that might hurt someone else and your intentions were good, but it came out wrong or it happened in the wrong manner, then in that case, maybe you don't accumulate any negative karma from that one situation. Um, so remember, your intentions are also recorded in the Akashic Records. So if you fail, it doesn't matter. You tried. You really tried. You didn't sit back and lay on your couch and say, I'm just going to nap, forget it, whatever. I'm not going to try. No. It's going to be recorded that you really tried. You failed, but you really tried. And that's important. That's an important part because you're going to be helping yourself for your soul for the next life. It might be less difficult for you to get past that step because if there's something pending that you didn't manage to learn or go through in this life, it's going to be left pending for the next incarnation. But if my intentions and I really push for it and I really tried, they might not they might not make it or your soul might not make it that difficult for the next incarnation because your soul is also that's something you learn from the book also. Um your soul is part of the the planner of the life. And the book talks about this, just like the Keshek records. You're an active participant in the creation of the incarnation that you're currently in. You are the one, um, just like just like your masters and guides, you're the one that are going, yes to this, no to this, this is a good idea, this is a bad idea. The masters don't make you do anything. The guides don't make you do anything. You're not obligated to do anything. This is what the book says. You're not obligated to do anything. You're given opportunities and choices and they'll show you in the book they talk about how you can either pick this body or that body you can pick you know this area where you want to incarnate do you want to be born here or be in there these are the parents options um and the Kashuk records always always talked about that but in a different way because i've never heard of it from the masters whereas you were given specific different options and you choose one um I'd always heard it in a way where it sounded like I was going, okay, this is going to be my body. This is going to be my name. These are going to be my parents. So I thought it was more like I, I go out and I see, I see all the options that exist and I pick them. Whereas the book talks about how you're given a limited amount of options for what you're trying to accomplish in that life, which makes total sense. You're still picking it. Like the catches record said, you're still picking your body. You're still picking your, your, your name, your parents, all those things. So it's, that's the difference where I saw between how I had viewed it through the way that the catch records explained it in readings. 
um, it sounds like it's more limited, the options, but the way that the book describes it is makes sense. You're saying, okay, this is what I'm going to try to accomplish in this life. And the masters and guides who know, who know you very well and who know what you're capable of just as, as much as you do, or maybe even more, they're the ones that go, okay, this is the body that's going to help you do that. And this one might help you. And this one too, this one's going to be the best one for you. And they'll let you know which ones are your, your, you know, m- more successful options, uh, but you might choose one of the other ones that are less successful and, and because you decide to for whatever reason. So that was really cool to see how they described it with more detail, whereas Akashic Records always described it, but not as so much detail into it. Um, so yeah, so coming off, I came, I came off a little bit from what I was talking about. I was talking about the three R's. So um, it was reunite and then a review. And then the third R is rest. Um, in my mind, the way, when I got the three R's from the Kashuk records, I thought it was, I'm going to see all these people that I love that are no longer, you know, incarnated and they're going to meet me We're, it's going to be really nice and beautiful. We're going to hug or whatever. That's how I saw it. And then I'm going to review everything I did. And we're going to go over, is this good? Is this bad? And then I'm going to go and just rest and I didn't know what really that is because I was never shown from the Akashic Records. I've never shown what the rest looked like. I never really understood it either. I knew that you rest. I was like, okay, well, rest is I'm not incarnated. I'm not learning anything, I thought, maybe. I'm not, there's nothing to accomplish. I'm just resting before my next incarnation. That was what I understood from, from the word rest from the Akashic Records, which I never really got really deep into. But the book describes it, and it's pretty interesting. The book um, describes it as you're actually together with your soul group. You're connected. You have your, your groups, which are, are your soul groups, which is part of the reason why this um, podcast is called the Soul Tribe Podcast, because the Cash Records also talk about the group that you always incarnate in, the same people that always are showing up in your lives, right? That's your soul tribe. In this book, they call it your soul group. Um, the Cash Records always call it, you know, your, your incarnated soul, soul, soul tribe or something like that. Um, or your soul, in this case, it's soul group, but it's, it's the souls that are closest to you, um, whom you keep choosing to incarnate as my mom, my dad, my sister, my brother, and, and you change roles between each other. So that's the same thing with what the book was showing that this group is an intimate group. You're very, um, you know, each other very well. You're very familiar with each other. Uh, you know, your strength. And, and the strength of the person that are the people that are in your group with you, you know, the weaknesses of those individuals and yourself and they know yours. So you know each other really well. You've incarnated probably many, 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 many lives with each other and you keep continue to pick each other to teach certain lessons, right? So it was really cool to, to hear how they're the rest, um, that they have at the end of the three R's for the book. It was you're actually getting together with this group and you're kind of bonding and you're, and there seems to be a lot of humor. The book talks about like being a lot of humor and joking around and having fun, which I never even thought to imagine that. Um, I just heard rest and I thought, okay, I'm just, you're going to chill out somewhere. There's going to be maybe a garden. I don't know. There's gonna be a field. You're going to feel free. You're gonna be able to like float around. That, that was in my, my mind. That was the image I got when they said they would say rest. But it looks like you're actually very much social interacting as a soul with your group there. Um, they talk about how they, they like joke with each other, make fun of each other, mistakes that you made in the incarnations. So it's, and, and he, they talk about also how it depends on the group. Every group has a very different dynamic. Every group has individuals that are very different. So the way that group interacts with each other is dependent on, upon the individuals. And the other thing I liked uh, to see from this book compared to what the Kashuk records always showed me was our souls do have a personality. We are, we, we are actually still a person, a persona per se. Right. But the thing is, and this, I like to, I liked to see how the book confirmed something that the Kashuk records repeatedly shows me in readings when I do it for individuals is we're actually not the personality of the, of the personality of the soul that we have. So our soul is usually not like what we choose to be in the incarnation because we choose to be 
this or this or that, or, you know, we pick aspects of our personality that come with the body that we're, we're choosing because it's going to help us push past something specific or, or help us accomplish something. And it was really cool to see confirmed what the Akashic Records always said is your soul is a personality. It's just not the one that you have on earth. You might have abilities that have to do with what you're good at on earth because your soul on the other, on the other side has tasks or has a job, if you want to call it. Um, so your personality might, might be linked to what you're good at on the other side, but that's not always the case. That's just many times, or it's common for it to be the case, but it's not always the case. So that was another really cool thing to see. Um, it talks about orientation um, it talks about preparing for the next life, for the next incarnation. Um, and it, it goes, it, it gives even more detail than the detail that, that I've seen with the Kashuk Records that I, I have a contract. It's a contract that's basically signed by the soul, which is my soul saying, yes, I will, I will, I agree to all these terms of the incarnation I'm about to have. This is going to be my body. These are going to be my parents. These are going to be the rough moments. These are going to be the easy moments. These are going to be the enjoyable moments. These are going to, this is going to be what I'm going to learn. This is going to be the person I bump into because I have, I have to help them learn this and they have to help me learn that. That was how they always showed me the contract and that it was signed um, by the soul. Once all the agreements were kind of tidied up and uh, everything was in in its proper place right but then they talk about these signs and it's almost like um you're given marks of moments that you're supposed to be awakened to or remember like a click right so you're supposed to go and they call it almost it could be it be, could, could be considered the deja vu or it could be considered almost like, oh my God, like I feel like I know you, or I feel like this moment I've lived it before, or this seems really familiar to me. And they talk about how we're go we we we're orientated into what's going to be coming, what the possibilities are, that the soul's role play to practice and make sure that they make the right decisions. And the signs are put into us, are ingrained into us to help us make the, cro the proper decisions and, and take the proper path. So it, that was really weird to see because I never considered that. I never asked about it, obviously, and I never heard about it. I had heard about the planning, um, but it was really cool to hear how that process might be, might be working to our advantage to help us create the reality that we're here to have, because what it is, is a reality. We're here, we're having a reality, right? And of course it talks about our guides and how every, every, every group has its own guide. And this, I also saw in a different way, because the way I was shown is you come to me, um, as an individual who wants a reading and as an Akashic Records reader, what I do is I go and I open up your book and I see your guide there. I see the guide usually next to the book and your mat. Sometimes there's masters there. It could be, I usually see one to three masters and I see the guides. I know the guide is individual to that, that person, to that individual that I'm reading. I know that that guide, that's not mine. That's theirs. And so in my mind, I always thought, cause every time it was a different guide in my mind, I always thought everyone has one guide. That guide is dedicated to that one, only that one individual person. That's what I believe because the way I was seeing it. But it actually is that that guide is the guide of all the individuals in that one um, organization or that one soul group. That's what it seems like it's showing in the book. So to me, I was like, wow, I never really thought about it that way. All I knew is I opened up the record. I know that you have, you have your guide. I have my guide. That person over there has their guide. That person over there has their guide. And I never stopped to consider maybe people that are close to me around me might have the same guide as me because they might be my soul group. So I, I find that like, um, almost like a, a wake up call. I'm like, Whoa, I never, yeah, let me think about this for a second. It was a little weird. I do know that the masters though, masters can be dedicated to many people at the same time. Um, they're very good at dispersing their, dispersing their energy into into different moments and different times and different and, and attending to different individuals at the time. So when I did open up records of individuals and I saw the masters, 
I knew that that wasn't a specific master to that person only. I knew that that master, it was highly probable that they were with other individuals also. They were probably assisting other individuals also. That was something that I was very aware of. Um, my dog, my dog in the back barking. Um, to, I, I stopped the recording. I took a little break to wait for her to finish barking because I didn't want her to bother the, the episode. So yeah, I was talking about the masters and, um, so yeah, so it was really interesting to see how it was described by the souls in the, in the setting of them disincarnating and meeting up with the masters or guides. And then you have this whole other side would be, he talks about Michael Newton in the book talks about how souls have a level, which I was also very aware of from the Akashic records. Um, he categorizes them as um, one, two, three, four, and five levels, right? And so beginners would be one and two and three. He considers up to three um, like a medium level and then four and five he considers them more advanced. Um, and he talks about how fives he doesn't really get the chance to put under hypnosis because there's not a lot of incarnated here in on earth right now. Or at least they don't. They didn't arrive to his practice um, in those years where he studied these cases. I was always shown the levels of advancement of the souls from beginner to middle, and then middle up. So I didn't see it as one, two, three, four, five like like he's describing. It was more almost like you're here in the middle, and then once you're in the middle, you're start, you're already considered more. A more practiced soul is, is, is the best word I would describe the way they always showed it to me. The more practiced souls, which means you have more lessons incorporated in your being, in your, your consciousness. You have more... Um, it doesn't actually necessarily mean you have many, 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 many more lives than the ones that are in the beginning, beginning. Um, it just means that you were able to get a lot done and that was cool to see in the book because he describes his upper level uh, four and fives. He describes them as my mediums up, which is they learned. Some of them learned a lot in many, 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 many lives. And some of them learned a lot in fewer lives. So it's not the amount of times you incarnated. It's the, it's the amount or uh, the quality of what you learned or how much you were able to learn and process in those lives that you're incarnated, which uh, has a lot of similarities with the way the Akashic Records described it. So that was really cool also to see. Um, the advanced souls are souls that are basically, he describes them, most highly probable the advanced souls are preparing to be guides themselves. Also something the Akashic Records always talked about in, in a few of my readings. Guides, guides are usually very up. So I had the zero to medium, medium to up they were on the very high scale of the, from the medium. So I ha I always was always shown like the line of medium and the higher souls were way above that line. Um, and what I usually saw was that they were preparing to no longer incarnate, which I didn't really go into detail with the Akashic Records. I didn't ask them why or what's going on. The book describes it as they can incarnate, but they usually generally don't because they're dedicated more to being guides. The Keshek Records, to me, always described it as you don't incarnate anymore because either you're turning into a guide, a master, which is higher than a guide, masters are higher, you're turning into a guide or a master, or you're actually getting a specific task, or you, you, have, you have something that you're dedicated to, your job on the other side. There's many jobs on the other side. It's very, very um, organized, and people are very... It's not like here where you can, you know, a person studies, you know, goes to business management or studies just business and then you just kind of get a job. No, like they, when they, when you go into a, a section of a job, you're very specific inside of something. It's very detailed. You're good at that. That's your thing. That's what your soul's good at. And so the book corroborates the same thing. Something very similar as you have a job that talks more about guides, talks more about guides, but it doesn't say so much about other jobs. Um, cause the Akashic records, it seems like 
they always they always want to they're, they're, they talk about how you're still developing your abilities and sometimes there's something you're really good at that you, your soul hasn't f- totally figured out yet especially if you're a newer soul your soul hasn't figured out that it really likes this one thing and it's really good at that one thing that it likes and oh this is what I I might want to dedicate myself to once I've you know finished all these karmic lessons as a human being or once I finished learning everything I have to learn as a human being. So that's why I think the Kashuk records always don't talk too much about what um, what each individual is going to be doing on the other side because it's kind of sometimes it's still iffy, especially if that soul's not too high up there, you know, past the medium level that I see. So that's that that's that's really interesting to see how becoming a guide. F- isn't that natural? And in my mind, the way the Akashic Records always said, oh, well, you, you know, you've advanced, you're past the medium, intermediate, whatever level. And now you don't have the carnate anymore. You learned everything. You got through everything. Just become a guide. And I thought it was just like, almost like easy for the soul, right? Because if the masters are saying to me, yeah, they become a guide after, I just think it's easy. I never really thought to think the soul might be fearful or it might, it might be iffy about its new task. So... This book actually talks about how they're, the souls are still aware of the fact that they can be better. They can get they can get to a better level f- to for the people that for the souls that they're going to assist. And so it talks about how the guides need to practice, and they start with small groups and not big groups of individuals. Um, and so that was interesting to see because I never even thought about asking the Kashuk records. Oh, is it something that you progressively do after you become a guide? Do you become a guide a bigger? Like, I never even thought about asking about groups, amount of people that the guides are, because in my mind, I'd always thought the guides were for one individual and you have your own guide, just like everybody else. Um, but that's also because the information is what you need to know, and it's not always totally and completely detailed. I didn't really need to know that that person that was in front of me had a guide and that the, somebody else had that same guide. I, that was not information I needed. I, w- I needed to read the catch records of the person in front of me and I needed to interact with their guide. And that was about it. Right. Their guide in their book, obviously. Um, and so the book also talks about, yeah, choosing your new body and how the new body and the way the brain and the body that you're picking, how it's going to interact with your with your life and the life that your the, the soul's incarnating is choosing to have. So the brain is important. And I didn't know that because this is something that the Kashuk records never talked about to me because I it never came up in a reading how the brain and a soul mixing together isn't always the same. So if a brain and that soul mix, it could have a personality that it's planned, right? But in another life, maybe the soul doesn't mesh as well with another body that the other brain it has in another life. So it's really interesting to hear the backstory about how brains and souls start getting to know each other and work with each other. It was very, that was very mind blowing for me because there's things in the book where you're like, Oh, I don't know if I'm ready to think about that. I'm not, and I'm sure I'm ready to accept that. And I'm glad that I'm actually reading this, these books or I read this book because I'm reading now his other book, but I'm glad that I'm reading these books now because there's a lot of things that it talks about that I would have been able to accept as true, or I wouldn't have been able to go, yeah, okay, let me, let me digest it and consider it as a possibility. And one of those things is parallel lives. Now, this is something I had heard about through another teacher, one of, one of the, um, teachers in, in in Uruguay talked about it, how she had had experience where she, she was feeling a little ill and she ended up finding out from the Kashuk records that her soul was incarnated in another, another body having a parallel life and the individual in that life who's not her, but it's another body, right? Was sick. And she was somehow, she was somehow feeling it. It must've been some sort of soul, connection. I'm not totally sure. She didn't really describe it, but she talked about it. And I remember that, I mean, this is, I'm talking about years ago. This is many years ago. This is, this was when I was starting to become a reader. So I was all new to everything and I didn't want to accept. I was like, nah, parallel lives, the soul living more than one life at the same time. It was too mind boggling for me. It was too out there for me to accept. 
So what I ended up doing was putting it on the back burner going, eh, maybe one day I'll think about it. But for now I'm deciding to not believe in it really. And then nine years, you know, nine years of being a meow, my own reader, I've noticed that there's a lot of things that I thought that didn't exist. And I've started seeing on my own as a reader, assisting other individuals like, oh, this, I used to not believe in this, but now I'm seeing it's kind of, it seems to be a thing. And so the book talked about parallel lives and how it's not common. Not a lot of souls choose to do them, to, to, to live two lives at the same time. What it's, what it's basically getting is, two individual experiences at the same lifetime. And so it's taking with it, it's almost like double learning. It's almost like you, you go in, you go to school and you go take a test and you just, it's like you're taking, you're doing two tests at the same time because you're like, well, I'm just going to get rid of these two tests. So I don't have to think about it at the end of the year. Let me just get them done now. Kind of thing. You're just, you're, you're getting those two done. So you progress. It's almost like you want to progress faster. You want to learn faster. You want to get it done faster. And so I'm just going to do them both at the same time. I'm dividing my soul into two different parts to incarnate in two different bodies at the same lifetime and have that experience. And now nine years after being a Cash Record reader, reader and many, I don't know, 10 years or 11 years after I heard that teacher talk about that, I now accept it as a reality, as a possible reality for some souls, very few souls. Um, so when the book talked about it, I was actually finally, it kind of brought it back up from the back of my brain that I had put it back there and said, ah, one day I'll bring it back and think about it. It kind of brought it back forward and goes, okay, what do I think about it now? You know, nine years of being a reader, what do I think about it now? And I'm realizing that I accept it now. For some reason, I've gone through so many different experiences as an, a, a, a a person, a reader, assisting other individuals, I seem to accept it now. And it's really, it was really crazy to see how the book described it because it was almost like, it talked about the individuality of each, you know, it gave a case of somebody has a life here and a life there and how both lives were totally different. And one was much, much harder than the other. So it was really, really, really like crazy to read the, read the conversations that he was having with his case study while they were under hypnosis and to hear what the soul had to say about the decision. And the really cool thing that I, that I learned in this book that I never thought to touch or touch in the Kashuk records or talk about in the Kashuk records was, is our entire soul inside of this incarnation? And it seems to be no. From this book, it seems to be no. It seems to be we pick up a, a portion, one third, two thirds of our soul to incarnate in the body. And so that's why parallel lives are actually a possibility. Your soul can divide into more than more than one piece, into two, three pieces, four pieces. But a portion of the soul is actually always back home, whatever you want to call it. It seems to be there just waiting for the rest of it to come back to incorporate and get back together. So that was really interesting. I never really thought about asking the cash records, Hey, by the way, you know, master's guides, beings of light. Can you tell me, you know, is, is the whole entire soul incarnated in this incarnation? I never thought to ask that. And nobody ever, I have ever assisted ever asked that. So it was never something that came up. And so th there's a bunch of new information in this book for me, which I'm definitely going to start picking at with the records and uh, trying to develop and ask them and, and get more information on it. So that's basically the whole out view of the chapters. Very, very overview, like a big overview of the book, because obviously each case goes into details and he gives more details about each case and other things he's learned. But my idea here was to give a comparative with what I know as a reader, what I've seen as a reader, what I felt as a reader, what I thought as a reader, because a lot of times it's, it's my brain, Lucia's brain interpreting, that's interpreting what the Kashuk records have said to, 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 to somebody else in their reading or to, or to me in my own reading. And that's the faulty part of it. Once Lucia's brain grabs it and starts putting her own opinions, thoughts, and feelings on it, I can limit it. Just like never thinking about how maybe my entire soul's not here. I'm, I'm limiting myself to only believe or accept a part of it. And I never allow myself maybe sometimes to see the whole big picture. Or I never never consider to even ask more questions on that. 
And that's one of the first things as a reader, you have to be your own detective. You have to ask questions deeper into that question so you can actually learn more because they're not going to give you more than you really need to know. They want, they want to make sure you understand things, but they don't need to tell you, Hey, by the way, your whole soul is not with you right now. That was not something that they ever really had to say. So it's a little tricky with the Kashuk records because you might be able to ask questions, but you may not always get the full answer because they never gossip. The masters always say, we don't gossip. We're here to assist you, help you, um, give you loving information and, and help you grow as, as a individual, a soul incarnated, having a human experience. We want you to be on the right path. We want to make sure that you're here to comply with yourself and your contract. Um, so sometimes that means leaving information out or you're not prepared to, a lot of times some also, you're not prepared to hear all the information, which is why I get individuals whom, you know, today might come to me for a reading and they'll hear, they'll ask a question and they'll get a, a, an answer and they might come back in a year and ask the same question. They'll get more on top of that answer because now they're prepared to finally hear more about it before maybe mentally they were, they couldn't absorb it. They couldn't understand it or they couldn't accept it. But guys, I hope that's really helpful. And I hope you guys found it interesting, you know, me comparing my, my own notes, my personal experience as a reader with the book. I'm actually on the second book um, and I'm thinking about doing the same thing where I'm going to just go through the chapters and what I learned from the book and, and let you guys know what I've seen as a reader. So yeah, I'll keep you posted, but I hope you liked it. And I definitely recommend this book to anybody who wants to understand the other side a little bit more because it's really cool. The view that you get and the energy and you like the energy you get from the other side about the information you're reading in the book, but also you feel that immortality, right? Um, you feel how you're an abundant being whom, who is bigger than what you see every day in the mirror. And it really, I at least find that knowing this about yourself, about the true reality of, of self, I feel that knowing that helps you in the moments of struggle, like the, the really bad moments in life or the really hard moments in life. So guys, get the book if you're interested in reading it. If not, I'll keep you posted and, and keep comparing notes with the other books I read. Um, and I'll, I'll make sure to put in everything I can to assist you to understand if there's something you don't understand. Also, you guys can shoot us a message on the form. You can also send us a message um, through Instagram if there's any questions on top of like something I talked about about this book or that the customer said. So don't be shy. Let us know if you have any questions because we, we want to interact with you guys. Hope you like it and thanks for listening, guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Bye.